Hello! Welcome to episode 141 of the Craft House Magic Podcast. My name's Ellie and I'm coming to you from Norwich in Norfolk in the UK and today is the 12th of November. So welcome everybody. I hope you've all had a lovely crafty week since the last time I've spoken to you and I'm here to share all the things that I've been up to this week. So I have some knitting, a gadget, a blast from the past, a question from the Ask Me Anything thread and some information on my shop update which is this Friday at 7pm. Now I haven't got any embroidery to show you just because I've been so busy with the shop but I do have a fun packed weekend planned ahead full of craft at home of course. <laughs> um, so I should have lots to show you next week in terms of different crafts but today is mainly just knitting really and mainly on socks. So you can find me on Instagram, Ravelry and Facebook as Craft House Magic and I have my own website crafthousemagic.co.uk where you can find my handmade project bags, hand dyed yarns, stitch markers, higher higher knitting needles, clover crochet hooks and also bag making supplies. So we have two make-alongs going on, both in the Ravelry group on Instagram. I'll pop the hashtags on the screen as I'm talking about them if you wanted to use it on Instagram and um, obviously there's a thread on Ravelry if you use Ravelry. So the first is the Craft House Magic Gift Along 2020, which is basically any gifts, whether it's for Christmas or birthdays or any other thing that you celebrate or just because you want to give a friend a gift come and join with the things that you're making it can be any craft not just knitting and we also have the autumn makes craft along going on in the Ravelry group as well as Instagram and that's basically all the autumnal things so anything autumn and I'm just going to finish that off uh, by the 15th of November so you still have a couple of days to enter there so do join in with that as well basically I'm drawing for prizes both from Instagram and on the Ravelry pages and it's not just finished objects you can come and chatter as well so the more you chatter along the more chance you have to win so let's get on with the good stuff shall we I have a secret pattern to show you so if you have purchased the mistletoe kisses sock set and bag that came out a couple of months ago and they're all sent out now if you have purchased it and you do not want to see the pattern I will put a timestamp on the screen I have got two pairs of socks to show you, one out of All I Want For Christmas Is You colourway and the second one out of the Mistletoe Kisses colourway which is in the kit. So if you don't want to see the pattern at all, skip to the timestamp on the screen and I will put another timestamp after I've shown the All I Want For Christmas Is You colourway so that if you don't want to see the colourway yet, if you're keeping it for secret for the Christmas, you can skip along to that as well. So timestamp on the screen is to avoid all spoilers of the Mistletoe Kisses sock pattern and also the Mistletoe Kisses sock yarn. So if you skip to there you won't see it and it'll be secret still. <laughs> so I'm now going to show you the pattern so if you don't want to see it skip along now. So here they are. This is my Mistletoe Kisses sock pattern and this pair was actually test knitted for me by my lovely mother-in-law Liz and it's in the colourway All I Want For Christmas Is You and it's basically a pale background with red, pink, green and blue little splashes of colour and then we've got contrast toes and heels in the contrast that comes with the sock set which is a sort of green but it's got hints of blue in it as well which I think is a lovely lovely shade. So the sock pattern is knitted top down it starts with a one by one twisted rib at the top and then you have these cute little bobbles which are representing the mistletoe and there's some lovely lace just below it here which I think is really nice because then after you've gone past this lace bit there's a lot of plain knitting to do so if you're at Christmas and you just want to relax a bit there's lots of relaxation knitting to do but if you look here you can see that there's a little kiss on the heel so this is to represent the mistletoe kisses because it is a mistletoe kisses sock pattern after all and that's just to finish it off and that's on both sides of the sock um, just to give it a little bit of detail that's a little bit different. So this sock pattern will be sent to all the people that purchased the mistletoe kisses sock and bag set um, earlier this year but I do have a couple that are going in the update so if you're interested in um, finding out about that if you stay and listen to the shop update information at the end of the podcast I'll tell you a bit more about it. So 
the pattern is uh, will be available to everybody else who hasn't purchased it already on the 28th of November so you can purchase it separately but like I said if you have purchased the sock set you will get that pattern automatically in your email box but for everybody else it will be available on the 28th of November so I have a second pair to show you in the same pattern and this one is knitted by me but this is actually in the mistletoe kisses colorway that came with the sock set so if you do not want to see the colorway skip to the timestamp on the screen or the link in the description bar so you don't see it at all this is the colorway that came with the bag and sock set that i sold earlier this year as a sort of mystery kit so if you do not want to see it make sure you skip now so this is the mistletoe kisses colorway as well so this is what i originally designed it as and um i just love these tones of different tones of green and little splashes of like a burgundy colour and it's very similar to the colour that Barbara is actually <laughs> um, she isn't on the podcast today but she will be back next week I'm sure of it so that's the mistletoe kisses colourway it's the same sock pattern um, but I knitted this one and again you can see the little bobbles at the top of the sock pattern I'm not quite sure you might actually be able to see the pattern a little bit better in this yarn on the camera I'm not sure but um, and there's the little kiss just there and basically the rest of the sock down there is nice and plain so you can um, get all the difficult knitting done earlier on so that you can relax a bit um, and eat lots of mince pies I'm planning on <laughs> I have actually only got I've nearly finished the second sock of my pair which is a bit terrible since this is a sock pair I designed and Adam's mum's already finished hers <laughs> I'm still halfway down the foot of the second one um, but they get in there and it won't take me long I'll probably be able to finish this foot off this evening so I can show a finished pair off for when the actual release date is coming out for the pattern so there we are so the original mistletoe kisses sock set which was the bag the sock yarn and the sock pattern those were sold a couple of months ago but i will have a couple extra in the shop this friday to go on sale um, i will be selling the sock yarn on its own later in december but i will not be selling the bags again they will be just for those people that bought the kits so um, if you do want one of the bags which i'm leaving as a mystery at the moment um, pop in the shop on Friday and you might be able to get hold of one I will talk a bit more about the sock sets um, at the end of the podcast in the shop update section so now I have another pair of socks to show you I really haven't done a lot on these but I have done some <laughs> so these are the simple top down sock pattern um, that I designed which is free pattern so I'll leave a link to that in the description bar so you can find it so this is basically just a cast on at the top some two by two rib and then I've just knitted some of the leg of the sock and this is knitted in I put a spell on you colorway and it's got tones of different browns and mustard black and purple in there to be quite an autumnal colorway but quite subtle not too in your face and I am using these higher higher flyer trios which are basically three needles um, two of which sort of stay on the sock and then you use the third one to work with and you work across one side of the work and flip it over and then work on this side it's similar to the way DPNs work but obviously you only need to have the stitches on two needles because there's a bendy bit in the middle so I have got the interchangeable version so the cable comes unscrewed on here but they actually I didn't realize that they do some fixed ones as well so I'm going to try some of those and I may have them in the shop um, but I, I'm going to try them first before I sort of start selling them I've got to decide as well because they do different length ones um, which one I like best so then I know what to recommend for you guys so that's that pair of socks on the needles I have actually cast on a moustache of another sock <laughs> but I will be talking about that a little bit later on in the Ask Me Anything thread so pretty much all the sections are related to socks so if you like sock knitting um, stay tuned 
So that is my sort of knitting section over with, but I do have um, my gadget next, which is also related to knitting socks. So I've just showed you these, but now I've took the socks off. <laughs> So these are my favourite sock blockers um, and they're the gadget for this week. They are from a company called Bryson and I picked mine up from a shop called Loop which is a London yarn shop. I will leave a link to exactly where I got them from on um, in the description bar but you can choose three sizes. Now I have two pairs of these. These are the larger pair um, and they do small, medium and large. This large pair is supposed to be for men's socks, but I've got quite large legs. So sometimes I need a larger pair of um, sock blockers. And I also have the medium sized ones as well. And then they do a smaller one for children as well. I don't have the children's one yet, um, but I may pick them up at some point. <laughs> but these are my favorite because one, there's a big hole in the middle so socks dry quicker on them which is always a good thing when you're blocking socks and two because they actually have made of wire if it's a little bit wide for you you can sort of keep pulling it to get to the shape that you want they are very tough though so you really have to give it a good squish but these larger ones I think when they came this bit was a little bit wider so the instep was even deeper than what I wanted it to be so I just squeezed it in a little bit and it fits great now and they it pulls them out really nicely because I've got quite big legs so um, it stretches the fabric out nicely so it's nice and neat I wouldn't say you definitely need a sock blocker but it is nice if you're going to gift socks to people to have them all nice and um, looking pristinely neat after you've sort of knitted them up and give them a wash and made them all look nice on the sock blocker but I do think it's nice to have them. They're not a necessity, um, but it is nice to have a gadget like this to, to sort of stretch them out and make them look nice and tidy. Of course, I need it for the podcast as well, because how, how would I show you socks properly without having proper sock blockers? So there we go. That is my gadget for this week, and I do have a blast from the past. So this week's blast from the past is basically my candy cane sock pattern. So these are a sock that I released a couple of years ago and they've got candy canes down the side of the foot and they're actually knitted one left and one right foot so that you've got this candy cane strip going down sort of one side of the leg and it is a top down pattern um, and it just includes some cables and I've got a little video of how to do a special stitch um, which is on these socks. So they are knitted in the Jingle Bell Rock colourway which is like a stripy candy cane micro striping sock and then I have a contrast heel in a green and it's got a Christmas tree heel. It's a Christmas tree shaped um, heel detail there. So there we are. That's my blast from the past for this week. You can still get hold of this pattern both on my website on Ravelry as well. I'll leave links in the description bar below. So now we're on to the Ask Me Anything section. And I had a lovely question a couple of weeks ago from a lovely lady called Andrea. And she was asking me about how do people knit on these tiny circular needles? So I've cast on a sock to show you. <laughs> So these are a pair of nine inch circular needles that I had in my stash and these are actually a chow goo needle because they're quite they're quite nice because they've got quite a stiff cable and the tips of the needles tend to be slightly longer. So I just thought I'd show you quickly. These two needles are both nine inch circulars. This top one is a higher, higher steel nine inch circular and this bottom one is a chow goo nine inch circular, but you can see that there is a difference in the length of the needle. So the chow goo ones are slightly longer. So if you have trouble gripping onto needles, the chow goo ones are a good choice to go for. I only have the higher, higher ones in my shop just because I tend to go for those for other types of needles, but I do like the chow goo for the nine inch circular. Now I normally knit with my hands sort of underneath the needle. So this is how I knit on the magic loop just work across the one side like so with the needle cradled in my hand but when I knit with the nine inch circular hoping that you'll be able to see this all right <laughs> because I can't get my finger underneath the nine inch circular 
because it's so small I tend to knit with my fingers above the work so I just have to change the way that I knit a little bit um, so that I can knit with these so I don't grip them very much I'm just using the tips of my fingers really to hold on to the sock with the nine inch circulars I have to hold it a little bit differently I have to grip it from the top and because there's a lot less to grip onto I have to change my knitting style a little bit so it works out like this so it can make your hands ache a little bit more than the other needles just because you're gripping from above I think some people knit like this already but I find it harder to knit for long periods holding it this way like so the yarn that I'm using for this is some gorgeous regia which is a mixture of wool, polyamide and silk so it's really extra squishy um, this is what the label looks like and that's going to be a lovely pair of socks so I'm doing a top down pattern here as well so it's um, also different to knit with these flyer trios as well so with these I shall take a clip of me knitting with these as well so these are the flyer trios so they're basically two needles with a flexible bit in the middle you have two on the work and then you work with one and they work very similar to DPNs really so you start at the beginning of the needle and just work as normal and you're basically replacing this needle with this one and then you'll have one spare to start on the other side and it, you just have to sort of reposition um, the needles so that they're sort of comfortable um, because they can sort of stick up with them being on the front and the back um, sort of bending in every direction I have used the Addy version of these type of needles and I did find that because they were a lot stiffer in the centre portion that they were much harder to knit with I had to hold the needles a bit more like this so that they were the back needle was faced upwards a bit more but I can get away with being a bit more relaxed um, with these so thank you Andrea for that question I think it's really interesting to see the difference um, difference between knitting on different types of needles I haven't shown you how to do there's also DPNs that you can use and using two circular needles um, for sock knitting as well I think that's all the methods I I have used in the past there may be more <laughs> Also, Andrea was asking me whether there was a brioche knitting pattern good for beginners. And I just had a quick look on Ravelry because the brioche patterns that I've used so far have been quite detailed and not the ideal patterns to start with um, if you're a beginner brioche knitter. But I did find two that I thought would be really good. I would avoid patterns that have got lots of increases and decreases in the brioche because that could be a little bit confusing, especially when you haven't got the rhythm of doing brioche um, in your mind before you start doing those increases and decreases. So I found Gina's Brioche Hat and Cowl by Pearl Studio and I saw the cowl it looks like a brilliant pattern to start with because it's basically just brioche with no increases and decreases but if you tend to get bored of things maybe you want to start with something slightly more challenging like the hat so you'll have quite a bit of hat to knit in plain brioche before you then have to do some decreases for the the top of the hat and I did see another hat as well which I really like the look of and that was the Marlowe hat by Andrea Maori. so hopefully I'll have remembered to put some pictures on the screen and also some links in the description bar below um, but I do think brioche is really fun to knit so don't hesitate to have a go and don't be put off um, by thinking it's really complicated because once you've got into it it's not as complicated as you think just avoid doing lots of increases and decreases I think the first brioche project that I did was a Stephen West shawl um, it was the building blocks shawl which has got lots of increases and decreases on every sort of 12 stitches or something so not ideal to start with that but hey ho get, <laughs> get um, thrown into the deep end <laughs> Oh dear. 
So I've just got one more section for this week's podcast. Next week I'm hoping to have all the sections because I have got a weekend planned full of crafty goodness for me. <laughs> so I can't wait um, to have the whole weekend just packed with crafty goodness. Anyway, so we have the shop update section now. So what I was saying earlier is that the Mistletoe Kisses a bag and sock set. I will have a few of those in the shop on Friday at 7 p.m. There will only be a few so I'm going to list it as a very plain listing so if you purchase the set you can then leave a note with your order or just send me an email afterwards to say whether you want it to be drawstring or zipped and what base that you would like your sock set to be in. So you have three choices you have merino and nylon, you have merino, nylon and selena or BFL and nylon. So those are the three choices for the sock sets. But you will get the bag, the sock set, the pattern um, and a couple of little extras. Um, but of course I will be selling the sock pattern on its own if you just wanted to buy that. And also the sock set, the yarn sock set, that will be for sale um, in the middle of December so that you can purchase that separately. But the bag is exclusive to those who purchase the set as a complete thing. So I just wanted to say as well there are a couple of fabrics that I am waiting on delivery so there are a few of the bags that are out of stock at the moment. Some fabrics I can't get in again but I know that the purple lining fabric for the Moonstruck cat bags I will be getting some more of the lining in. I'm just waiting on the delivery. My fabric um, warehouse contact just seems to take a little bit longer to get back to me and in the current climate with the covid lockdown again so thank you so much for watching i'm sorry there's not more content this week but i'm hoping to have lots more to show you next week after my crafty weekend <laughs> thank you so much for watching don't forget to like and subscribe if you'd like to see more and i shall see you in the next episode bye